Welcome back to East End Park, Barry. It's nice to see you. Nice good to be back. Um, when you came here, you, you were a youth player at Rangers. Um, was it a, a bit of a wrench leaving them to come to Dunfermline? Uh, yeah, it was. It, it wasn't away because I was like a Rangers fan as a kid and stuff like that. But um, the bottom line was I had to play uh, first team football. I'd been sitting on the bench and made a few appearances with Rangers um, over the la like two years before I came to Dunfermline, and um, the chance of first team football was was like, the key factor in me coming here. Um, and obviously, in the five years I was there, I never looked back really and played pretty regular for the club. So, and in the end, it was a, it was a right decision to be made, I think. What were um, Jimmy Calderwood and Jimmy Nicholl like to work with? Yeah, they were brilliant. I mean, everybody asked me who the best the best coach is you've worked with, and I mean, Jimmy, the two Jimmys are definitely up there with two of the best. Um, just really enjoyed coming in in the morning and and, uh, and training. Um, and obviously later on in my career here at Dunfermline, the, the two of them made me captain. So it was um, that was obviously a big highlight in my career. So it's um, I've got a lot to thank the two for. They're, um, they're, they've, played, they've played a big part in my, in, my, in my football career, you know. Yeah. Um, as you say, when you were here, it was one of the most successful periods for the club at that time under Jimmy Calder. Yeah. Um, so was it a good time to be here? Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, I think just the atmosphere that they made in the dressing room. I think they, they had a group of lads in there that we, we, we maybe weren't like the best team in the in the division, but one thing we had was a great team spirit. And when we went out on the pitch, we just felt that we weren't going to get beaten. Um, it was just as I said before in the, la in the last uh, answer, it was, a, it was just a great place to come in in the morning. It was lively, training was lively, and um, Jimmy and uh, Jimmy Nicol made sure that you knew your job on a Saturday. And we went out and tried to tried to put that into practice. And obviously, it maybe took a couple of years to get us going, but certainly the, the last couple uh, couple of years that Jimmy Calder was here, it was um, it was a, a really sort of good time to, to be at the club, and I'm sure the fans enjoyed the football that we played, the sort of attacking brand, and it was it was it was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Mm. One of the games you played in was against Rangers in the 2002-03 season when both Rangers and Celtic were going for the, the title. Yeah. Um, and although Dunfermline were beating 6-1 at Ibrox at that, that game, um, after the, the comments that came out from Celtic from, from Chris Sutton, a lot of people said that they weren't justified because of the performance that Dunfermline did that day, yeah. even though it was a 6-1 defeat. Yeah. How do you think they were justified? No, I don't. Not at all. Not at all. It was. Um, I, I thought the performance was pretty good. I mean, obviously, the conceding six. You look back at it and you think we, we'd obviously done something wrong with, with conceding goals. But I think all the goals were were late on in the game. We'd done really well to get back in. Jason scored an unbelievable goal to get us back to one each. And I think at that time they were they were pretty nervous. And we had another two or three chances and. I mean, on a different day, we could easily like put them away, and we'd have, um, we'd, have, we'd have took the lead and put even more pressure on Rangers, you know. But it's, um, nah, I think the, the performance was really, really good, um, and for their comments to come out, yeah, it was, it was a little bit sort of hurtful, and we were, we were a little bit annoyed with it. But I can understand their point of view as well. So they were obviously going for the title, and, and to miss out on it, it must have been like gut wrenching for them as well, you know. So I can totally understand them being a little bit disappointed. But nah, I don't think the comments were warranted, warranted no. Mm -hmm. Um, while you were playing in midfield for the, the club, you, you scored 30 goals. Um, in your opinion, was there any that stood out? Um, from a fan's point of view, it would probably be the, the goal up at Inverness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that was that's probably the, the, the best goal I've scored in my career. The, um, the we won the semi-final against Inverness, so it's um, it's definitely. I mean, I, I enjoy scoring goals. I enjoy scoring goals all the time. Um, and every goal I've scored, I'll probably remember. And if you ask me about them, I'll probably talk you through them. So, um, but certainly the one up at, in the semi-final was the, the best one I've scored easily. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was um, the, the venue of Pitodri for the replay of the semi-final was ideal? Because a lot of people thought it should have been some, at Perth at McDermott um, Park. Yeah, I remember all that going on at the time. But as, as players, I don't think we just got on with it really. We we were disappointed. We are. Or, uh, the performance in the first game at Hamden. Uh, we wanted to sort of finish the tie off there and get to the final there, and obviously we had a big fall in through in Glasgow that day. So we felt that we were, um, we obviously had to, to try and win the fans round again after the first performance. So it was, um, we weren't really bothered where it was, it was going to be the pitch. It was um, just getting, getting on with the job and getting through to the final, really. Mm -hmm. And in the final, you captained the side. Um, and uh, how did 
you enjoy the experience of actually playing in the final because that would have been your, your first Scottish Cup final. Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd been involved, I was in the squad uh, with Rangers at Cup finals but never been stripped. So to be actually like on the pitch and involved in it was for a start was brilliant but to be captain of the club was was brilliant. I'm obviously I was disappointed for Nipper. He was captain like, all through the season but then he got injured and uh, Jimmy gave me the captaincy with a few games to go. So um, we were all hoping that Nipper would make the final but unfortunately he didn't. And obviously, cap uh, to leading the boys out, um, and I thought at half time I was going to lift the trophy. To be perfectly honest, uh, when Andreas scored and we were winning one 0 I just thought we were we were played really well and just couldn't really see Celtic scoring. And just needed me that little bit of luck, obviously with the penalty decision uh, in the second half before they got the equaliser. Uh, but I really thought I was going to be lifting the trophy, which would have been special. But that's the way it goes. Um, after that, you played in Europe with Dunfermline for the first time <coughs> yeah. against Hafna Fjorda yeah. in Iceland, so what was that experience like? Yeah, brilliant. I, I, I'd experienced it with Rangers before, there. that was one of the few games that I did play. I played uh, European football for Rangers when I played there, so I knew a little bit about it, but um, obviously it was new to the club and well, for, for a long time new to the club. Um, but it was great to travel out there, I remember travelling with loads of fans in the, in the airport and I think planes were delayed. and. It was, um, it was just, it was just good times, and again, probably really disappointed with the result over there. They were probably a better team than we thought they were going to be. We came back with a two-each draw, which we thought would see us through. That. Unfortunately, I missed the second leg with injury, but um, and we lost a late goal, which which killed us really in the in the in the game at McDermott Park. So um, a good experience, but I wish it lasted lasted a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, that game was obviously played at McDermott Park because of the artificial surface. Here. Yeah. Um, what did you think of? playing on the artificial surface here? Um, I thought it gave us an advantage, to be perfectly honest. I thought we were, um, because we trained on it every day, I thought it was um, it helped us. And the other teams obviously hated playing on it, but we got sort of used to it. I don't think the lads, the lads would much prefer to play on grass, but um, I think we were training it every day, we just got used to it and it, it, it made it easier to go out there on a the Saturday. And um, I think the style of football that we played as well, it, it sort of, it was uh, better on that type of pitch. We kept the ball on the ground and passed it a lot better. So. Um, from that side of it, it, it was good, but I'd, I'd rather play in grass. Um, at that time, we had players like Skerla, Ian Ferguson, Yusuf Rossi, Nipper, Dinger. Yep. Who were the characters on the team? <laughs> um, well, Nipper, obviously. Nipper, for very lively in the dressing room. It was probably the, the, the lads that are put, sort of stayed round about here, were the, the, the sort of loud ones. I'd say Nipper, Craw, Jason Dare. Um, they were the lads that got the dressing room go going. Um, Fergie was really good as well. I mean, Fergie was another big part of me coming here. He'd obviously came here from Rangers before I came, and um, he spoke to me about coming here and, and, and playing alongside him in midfield and stuff like that. So he, he sold the club to me as well. So um, yeah, Fergie was. I used to travel in with Fergie as well, and uh, but it was, it was just a great dressing room. The Dutch boys brought a lot to the dressing room as well. Big Marco was crazy. Uh, Robbie Matai was, was loud as well, so all, all these guys um, in the dressing room were brilliant. It just made it, as I said like before, a great place to, to come and play. Mm -hmm. um, you left the club in 2005 when you went to join Jimmy Calderwood up at Aberdeen. Yep. So um, you obviously liked his style of play. Yeah. So, um, what time, what was it like up at Aberdeen for you? Yeah, a bit, well, Jimmy was like the main reason. Obviously, he came in and, and to, to take me up there. It was um, my last season here was like blighted with injuries. I didn't play a lot. I had a hernia problem near the end of the season when the club were trying to fight relegation, which was disappointing for me and the club, obviously. Um, but then in the summer, obviously, got the move to Aberdeen and. Um, and it was, it was nothing really against Dunfermline at all, it was just a, a chance to work with the two Jimmies again, that was basically the only factor. Aberdeen a big club as well, so went up and I really struggled for six months, really, really struggled for the first six months of my career up there, I don't know what it was, and it wasn't until a, a game in January where I scored a winner against Indy United that things sort of changed and I had a great two and a half years, I mean I had a three year contract up there, but six, first six months was dreadful, but so I'd say for two and a half years Aberdeen fans probably saw the, the best of me and obviously got the club finishing, we did a little chance of finishing second and just missed out but we got the club back into Europe as well there and uh, my last season there we obviously had a great run in U the UEFA Cup and played the likes of Bayern Munich and Atletico Madrid and stuff like that so it was um, it was another another good move for me yeah. Mm -hmm. And after that you went down to England. Yeah. Um, so what are you up to now? I Well I, I went down to Preston and played um, for four or five years down there and then I moved to uh, Fleetwood who had just been uh, promoted to League Two at the time. 
Um, so I had a season there, came back up to Kilmarnock for a season and then now I'm back down there at Fleetwood um, working under Graham Alexander, taking the under-21s. So um, it's, it's really good, I really enjoy it. It's different from playing, um, longer hours for a start. Um, but no, it's, it's great, I love it. Uh, we, we don't play in a league down there, the, the 21s. We just play friendlies against all the teams from the North West, like your Liverpools, and your Man United, Man City. There's loads of clubs round about in the North West that we can play against, sort of regular. So um, I love it, it's brilliant. I've got a really good group of lads who are uh, willing to learn and I can't ask for any more really. Did you see yourself going into coaching when you were a player? Uh, not when I was in Scotland, no. It was when I went down to Preston. I was uh, I worked with Alan Irvine down in, in uh, Preston, and I just sort of liked the way that he sort of coached and just he's always set up of his sessions and stuff. Like that. That's when I started taking a sort of big interest in it, and then it was when down there I came back up to Scotland to do the start doing the coaching badges. So um, I've done even though I'm based down in England, I've still done the, the coaching badges with the SFA. So. Um, I'm nearly finished the, the, the A licence just now, so it's um, it's all good, I'm really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So, do you look back with affection on your time at Dunfermline? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's, it, was, it was probably the, the, the best time, uh, some of the best football I played in my career, without a doubt. It's, um, it, the club gave me a chance of coming in from uh, not playing regularly at Rangers to come and playing here, and the fans were brilliant with me, sort of took to me right away. and. Um, I'd like to think I sort of repaid them with some good performances and some goals over the, over the four or five years I was here. So it was um, no, a brilliant place, and I'm just I'm just delighted to be back here. Looking forward to it today. Yeah, because you're playing in the Legends game, so um, we'll let you get away and get ready. Brilliant. Um, so thank you for speaking to us. No problem. And good luck. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it.